But tonight we've got a cute little card featuring the one of the hippest hippos. And uh, he's figuring out how to stay cool in this hot weather. So um, I think we should um, get started. What do you say? I'm going to... All right. So this is the card that we're going to be creating tonight. Isn't he adorable? So he's staying cool um, in his little tub and uh, he's got his snorkel gear on because he thinks he's going to be able to do that um, but he probably wants to submerge himself into the cool water so he needs a way to breathe so that's what that is all about we've got some little splashes here it's a pretty easy card to make but it's a fun fold so i just wanted to do something a little bit different tonight and so we'll call this fun fold friday night live and you can see it opens up like this so you can see part of the inside of the card when it's closed and then you see the rest of it when you open up. So let's show you how that is created. So we need a piece of thick basic white cardstock because that is our base. And I'm starting with a piece that is four and a quarter by 11 inches long. So this is what some people call a hot dog fold versus um, the other one, let's see, uh, I don't have another card handy because believe it or not, I actually cleaned up for once. And um, so this is what's called a hot dog fold. There is a score line already right here that I've put at the five and a half inch mark. So this would, when folded, give us just a card that opens up like this. We're going to bring in our paper trimmer here and we're going to cut at... Welcome, Marcy. We're going to cut this at eight inches. So I guess I need to open up my arm here. I'm gonna cut this at the eight inch mark. Save this piece. You're going to need it. All right, so now we have this piece and this right here, that's the base of our card. And this is actually the piece that goes on top. So we're going to um, bring in some of the in color designer series paper. This comes in the five in colors, right, all in one pack, and it's got four designs on each. So these are pieces that I've already pre-cut. So this is one of the designs. It's got flowers on the back and stripes on the front, one side and the other. And it's got a plaid on this side and polka dots on the other side. So you can choose whichever ones you want to go with. I cut this piece just a quarter of an inch smaller than the back of my card here. So it is four inches by five and a quarter. And all these measurements are on my blog, stamperhood.com. And let's see if I can go ahead and um, show you that. I'm gonna click show, Maybe, oops. Here we go. So I'm gonna glue this on here. And I'll probably actually, um, I'll keep that link up for a little bit and I'll try to remember to put it up at the end as well. I'm just gonna glue that down right here. Quick way to add color and texture because it's got it's not just a solid. Now, if you didn't have this, but you did have the Tahitian Tide or some other blue, go ahead and just put that cardstock down there. Now, this top part, I use the other piece, and this is two and a half by four inches, I think. Let me go over here and look. Oh, I'm sorry, it's two and a quarter. Again, like I mentioned, the details are on my blog. And they're actually up there right now, all the measurements. Um, but of course the video isn't in that blog post yet because I am doing it right now. So there we have the basics of our card. What I wanna do now is bring in that other piece that I cut off, because that's the piece that we're gonna turn and, and put on here. I'm gonna bring in a scrap piece of paper, and this is my grid sheet here, and I wanna apply a little bit of color here. So I've got some blending brushes, 
and I need Parakeet Party, that's another in color, and the Tahitian Tide. So the Parakeet Party is going to be my grass. I'm just gonna bring in a blending brush, take that first little bit off here, and add some grass about a third of the way. So let's see. And as light or as dark as you want it. That's all we need for the Parakeet Party ink. And then we are going to need the Tahitian Tide. And I'm gonna make that a pretty light sky only because it's a little more turquoisey than I would normally want a sky, but the colors go nicely. If you keep it light, you really can't tell it's turquoise. It's, it's just a sky blue. But sometimes the sky is almost turquoisey. So there we go. Now we need to bring in the feature, and that is our hippest hippos. And so these hippos are, um, I'm trying to find my cardstock that I got out for tonight. I don't know where it is. I'm gonna have to get it out again. I guess I must have cleaned up too much and put it away. Oh, I found it. So I'm gonna bring in my hippest hippos and I'm using, there, there are three hippos here. And so there's this little winking one holding a flower and then there's this ballerina. But I'm using this guy right here. So I'm going to bring, get him out and mount him on a block. You can see this is cling rubber. And then, so the Hippest Hippos is one of our celebration items. With a $50 purchase, and I know several of you have already purchased this set because they're so cute. Um, with a $50 purchase, you get to select this for free. Um, you could also, for a $50 purchase, select the hippo dies. Now obviously, they're not as fun without this set right here. So if you had a $100 purchase, you could do it um, at the same time and get them both. Or this is one month's purchase and hopefully as long as supplies last, this would be the next month's purchase. I'm gonna get out my hippo die too. Um, I need my grass and I need the splash. Here's the splash. And I need my snorkel and my goggles. Well, my snorkel and my goggles. Oh, and I also need the tub. So this set of dies has 19, I think it's 19, yes, 19 dies. So it comes with a lot. So each of the hippos has their own die. You've got some hearts. This is a little boat which is fantastic, because that's a really cute idea too. Hi, Nancy. Um, you've got a party hat. This is a propella, propella. I know how to speak. I'm not truly um, a Mainer that's been stuck in the woods for a long time. This is a propeller that goes on the boat. You can have a little life, life uh, ring uh, that can go on the boat as well. You've got some sunglasses. You've got some teeny tiny little flowers, or I guess those are stars. You've got some other kinds of flowers. You've got an umbrella and you've got some waves. So lots of, lots of things you can do with these dies and that one set. Really, really fantastic set. So let's go ahead and stamp, and I don't need my scrap paper anymore. Let's stamp our hippo. So we will need the Memento Basic Black because we're going to be coloring this guy. Now, some of you may be wondering why I am not coloring directly on this piece. Well, aside from the fact that it's already got some color on there, I mean, it is pretty light, so when if I were to color over it, it'd probably be fine, except for the fact that we're coloring with blends, and when you color with blends, they go through the other side. And because this card opens, I don't wanna see stuff bleeding through over there. All right, I'm gonna get out some blends. Now, gray granite would be a really great color for this hippo. You can also use smoky slate. Um, I, I don't actually have my gray, 
granite blends. I thought I ordered them, but I can't seem to find them. So I'm gonna use some smoky slate. Now I can, if you, this original one right here, that is actually a combination of smoky slate and crumb cake. So you can make different colors by blending the blends together. Now let's go ahead and see how just the smoky slate works. I'm going to color lay down a base color first and I'm going very carefully I don't want to wear out the tips here now if you notice not all of your hippo is going to show so I don't actually have to color his whole belly or his feet just want to make sure I color far enough down so he's covered by his wash basin color in here so so tell me do you guys like coloring or not there are times when I do and there are times when I don't I kind of go through phases but more often than not I think I do or at least the last year or so um, the blends do make it very easy and you can get some really great results uh, but I it's just it's a quiet time. It's, a, it's an activity that lets you just kind of breathe and if you're not in a rush to get a card done, it works just great. I'm gonna come in with the darker version. So our blends come in two versions, a light and a dark. And the dark is just used for contouring in my case here. So I'm gonna contour around his neck here. There's a little armpit both armpits around the edge there to give the um, impression that there's some roundness going on over here. And it looks pretty awful right now, but I'm going to do what they're, they're designed to do. And that is blend. I'm gonna show you that in just a second. All right. So now that I've got my dark in here, I'm going to come back with my Smoky Slate Light. And I'm using the bullet tip because I find it's easier to blend with that. And just come back in here. And the color dries a little bit differently because it looks like it's going on pretty dark right now. But it does lighten up a little bit. And you can actually just do a layer upon layer of your smoky slate if you want to. Because it does get a little bit darker as you do that. I'm just using some circular motions here. Going around his nose. And again, it does dry a little bit differently, so I'm gonna just leave a little bit lighter right there. I just it's like the light's hitting him right there. They say him. Could be a her. Got some nice eyelashes going on. All right. Now, of course, she needs some nail polish, so I guess it is a her. I'm gonna just give her a little bit of nail polish. This is Calypso coral, I think. Nice summery color. I thought it went nicely with the sweet sorbet that I'm going to be coloring with. It's kind of in that same family. And I'm going to, going to uh, die cut this, but I have a lot to die cut. I have some splashes. Now I've already cut out one set of splashes and one of the grass clumps, but I need to do that each of those again, and I need these. So I might as well die cut a lot, as much as I can in one pass. So let's bring in my stamp and cut and emboss machine. I am going to bring in the plates. So I need my number one plate. Let's see if I can get this into view a little bit more. I need a number two plate. I need one of my number three plates. 
Now my hippo. I'm going to bring her in there. And I have a little piece of washi tape. I'm going to line that up as best I can because it is important that we get a nice cut here. I want to go ahead and tape it down so it doesn't move. All right, so we've got that. We need to cut some other things. We need to cut another cup, clump of grass. So I'll bring that one in. And because there's no stamping involved, I don't actually have to adhere that down. We need some more splash. So here's some splash. I'm bringing in sweet sorbet for the snorkel and goggles. Let's see here. Snorkel and goggles. And the last thing I need is the tub. And I'm going to get out a piece of silver foil. Now we have, and I'll show you in just a moment, we have some silver foil that is has been added to the celebration items list. Stampin' Up recently um, added to the, to the options because some of the options have sold out. So those Christmas tree dies, the tree lot dies have sold out as have the pool party and soft sea foam cards and envelopes. Uh, where is my tub? Oh, here's my tub. So they've added some more and I'll go over what they've added in just a minute. So now I need my top plate. Put that over here. We're gonna send that all through at the same time. So we really only have to have one pass of all of this. You know, when I first started die cutting with our stamps wasn't actually a thing. We didn't have that option. It was Cutting stuff by hand. This is such a nice option to have now. So this little piece, you could use that for something, probably. Not me. I can use it to fill up my trash can. Let's see. Get all these pieces out. And get my little hippo out. Oop. Almost I cut one of my hair hairs on my head. All right, so there we've got our little hippo. I'm gonna go ahead and get some of this cleaned up and out of the way. Now I mentioned that I was going, uh, that uh, we added some items to the list of celebration options. Let's just go ahead and get this one last piece out. There are these holes in here that allow you to get out some of those pieces. These are really skinny pieces. So you might have wanted to use adhesive sheets to put some adhesive on the back of those. So when you die cut them, that's all you really had to do was peel and go. But I'm not gonna do that. I don't, I, I like the glue just as well sometimes. And on teeny tiny pieces, it's, you know, six of one, half dozen of the other, what works. All right, so let's see, let's, um, let's go ahead and bring in, bring this back in. I'm gonna put my hippo about in the center here. Oh, I forgot, I was, I was trying to tell you about a few things. Uh, so you can see the whole list if you look at my email that I just sent out uh, a couple days ago. Um, but the silver foil comes in three different kinds of silver. This is the one that I've used for the for the bucket. There's also a one that's a little bit. I don't know how to describe this one. It's more. I don't know it's just got a different color to it. And then there's a dark silver that's got a bit of a texture on it, which is cool as well. Um, so that's what the silver foil is. There's also a gold pack. It's um, 
there's some nice options here instead of just what's in the celebration catalog but those options are great as well we're going to put our little hippo on here and I'm just not putting any dimension on him put him right there all right I will be adding some things to him like this and because this is so fine, I'm gonna bring in my silicone sheet and a little bit of this glue. This glue will come right off this once it dries. I'm going to take my really, really fine pieces right here and just dab them with glue. Just put the goggles on. There we go. We're going to do the same thing with the snorkel. Put that right in his mouth. There we go. Just like that. Now you can do the same thing with some of these other pieces if you like. I'm going to get out my take your pick tool. I'm gonna to put the sharp end, oop. <laughs> Tried to put the cover on, just stabbed myself. Stop laughing, everyone. So let's see, we're gonna, we're gonna take some of these splashes. I think I can just, oop. I don't know where to put the splashes yet. I haven't put my tub in. Let's go ahead and put the tub in first. Uh, I'm going to take some of the edge pieces from my dimensionals and put them on the tub. I'll just pop the tub up a little bit. And there we go, that looks pretty good. And we're gonna put some splashes on. I'm just dipping it in the glue. And you can do the splashes however you'd like. Let's try another little one here. All right, something like that. Just put them down there, make sure they're down good. Um, I don't know if I want to do all six that I cut. And I'm running out of glue here. Let's, there we go. I think I will do all six. It's just that it adds a nice little bright brightness to the color. Oop, stick. There we go. All right, so there's that. Add some. We're gonna add our little uh, grass clumps. Now I could just add the glue directly from the bottle. I'm gonna add one behind here, and then I'll add one to the top of the tub. Just like that, I'm gonna take a second to dry. Okay. And as I mentioned, this will will rub right off. You can see that this part where it already dried rubs right off. I'm not going to put my fingers in that yet because that is not dry. And I'll just wash out this sponge so it doesn't get all hard and yucky. Um, we need to stamp a sentiment here. Now, in our Hippest Hippos dies, we have a bunch of sentiments. I used Love You a ton on the first one. I'm going to use You're So Hip on this one. And put that on there. And I'm going to go with the Memento Tuxedo Black. 
and I like it off to the side here. I don't have to worry about it being straight. So there we go. All right. And we're going to just attach this. Now, you need to be careful. Sometimes we get to be um, just so such creatures of habit that we would put adhesive all along this back side. And we don't want that because then if we stick it all down, it's now stuck and it doesn't actually open. So I want to make sure I'm only putting this on the top part. And I cut it so that it should have an even border all the way around. There we go. So there's the front of our cart. Now we need the inside. So we need another piece of basic white cardstock. And we want to cut that a little bit smaller. Let me get a piece out because I think I put... I didn't cut that ahead of time, which I should have. I thought I did, but I guess I didn't. So you could make it the same size as this particular piece, which was three by four and a quarter. I'm going to make it a quarter of an inch smaller. So I'm going to make it two and three quarters by four. So that just gives me a little bit of forgiveness. It doesn't, I don't have to work as hard to make sure it's all lined up. I can, I should stamp on this first. I'm going to go ahead and bring in a happy birthday stamp from, I think this is from Peaceful Moments. And I'll bring back my Tahitian Tide ink pad. Not looking overhead, so Ooh, came out straight. That's good. So when I put this, if I center this, you can see that it's hidden. Now if you cut it the same width and length, you could just kind of line it up with this guy right here, add the adhesive and close it, but I, I like to be a little bit conservative and safe. Just cut it a little bit smaller. It also means I have to write less in the end. I mean, hey, I did take the time to make the card. So that's something, right? And so there is our card. Isn't that so cute? She looks really great with those sunglasses on as well. Um, just there's so many cute dies in that die set. Uh, we should decorate the envelope. So I'm just going to bring in a piece of em uh, a white envelope here. And I could stamp my hippo on the front. And I probably would just go ahead and stamp right down here at the bottom. In fact, let's go ahead and do that. I need to um, bring in this piece again so that I don't stamp on my table. So just peeking out right there. That's kind of cute. You don't even have to color it. In fact, I wouldn't color it because I don't want my blends to show through. Just a little bit of, just a little bit of something down there. You could also take a piece of designer series paper and um, do the back flap. Either one of those things work. I think I'm just going to keep it just like that. And um, and there we go. We have that card.